Okay, we're gonna start recording. Looks like we're recording now. Okay, awesome. So welcome to Oils of the Bible. We're gonna go ahead and get started for tonight. Let me move this down a little bit. And so thank you for, for joining tonight or if you're joining to watch the replay, we're glad to have you here as well. So this is part one of a three-part series for Oils of the Bible, specifically um, dealing with Holy Week and the resurrection. We will deal with some Bible history as well, but we're going to keep the segments shorter and do it in a three-part segment today, tomorrow, which is Good Friday, and Saturday um, before we get to Easter Sunday. So I want to start by sharing with you one of my favorite verses, and I have this on a little board that I painted in my house. Um, mine specifically is from a different translation, but from Proverbs 21, 20, mine says there is oil in the house of the wise. Um, this is there is precious treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise. And so that's one of the reasons that I love to teach this class, and it's one of my very favorites to teach because I have found that for the wellness of our family and in taking care of ourselves in mind, body, and spirit health, that essential oils play a huge part. And so they have become a treasure to us. And I feel like the Lord has given us wisdom to learn how to take care of ourselves in a natural way by using the plants that he placed on the earth. So I want to share a little bit about that with you tonight. So let's go on to, hold on, I think someone else is joining us. So let me get them in the chat room here. Okay, so this is my family, and this is the reason why we started using essential oils. But um, this verse in particular is very important to us because we spent um, a lot of years trying to figure out how to find that life abundantly or life to the fully <laughs> Um, promise that God made us in John 10, 10. And the truth is that the thief, the enemy of our soul, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came and he said that he came so that we may have life and have it to the full or have it more abundantly, as it says in many translations. So John 10, 10 is kind of what we have based our life, our family, and our business on. We do believe that, um, God's plans for us are good. His purposes and her, his intentions and his plans for our future are good. That we were created to walk in health in our mind, body, and emotions so that we um, can be agents of his glory upon the earth and so that everything we do can point back to Jesus. And I hope that in this series, you'll find that all of this points back to Jesus. So tonight, the oils that we are looking at are going to be different. This is different than um, an essential oils made easy class would be. And we're not specifically going to talk about like the top 10 oils or anything like that tonight. We're specifically going to talk about oils um, in scripture and things that you may see as you're doing your daily devotions and Bible reading and maybe didn't even come across realizing that that was what um, the Lord was trying to speak. So God created us as three parts, body, soul, and spirit, just as the Trinity, it consists of three parts, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so tonight, you're going to be reminded that God is intentional in the things that he does. His word is filled with symbolism and with pictures um, that make it easy for us to understand things. And it's filled with um, pictures of what's to come. Some, if you were reading a novel, you might call that foreshadowing, um, but his word is not fiction, it's truth. And so we also refer to it as prophecy. We see things woven together that lead to a picture in another part of scripture. So in looking at that, what would it mean to you that what would it mean to you to know and have you thought about lately that God had a plan from the beginning of time, not from the beginning of your life, but from the beginning of time to heal our physical and emotional and spiritual needs so that we could walk in victory, so that we could walk in true health, 
and so that his plans and his purposes could be accomplished through us. So I'm going to go over our intention tonight, and then I want to open with a word of prayer really quickly. Okay, so the focus tonight that we're going to go over is the history of essential oils in the Bible, um, essential oil usage, the way that we use essential oils now and how it correlates to scripture and a few other things that are woven throughout scripture that you might not have noticed before. We're going to specifically talk about the oil of gladness that's mentioned in scripture and anointing with oils. Now, my original plan was to discuss Cyprus tonight as well. Cyprus has a beautiful um, picture that's written throughout. Um, it, it actually comes up. I'm sorry. We're I'm trying to enable one more person here. Kevin, are you able to access the waiting room? Okay, I'll get it. Okay, so Cyprus has a really, really beautiful story to it, and I feel like we won't have time to adequately cover that tonight, so we're going to add that into probably tomorrow's session and shift things around a little bit. So I'm really, really excited to share that with you. Cyprus is an oil that we don't talk about a lot, but when you see its correlation to scripture, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, your mind's going to be blown. So we will cover that tomorrow so we can give it the adequate time that we need. So let me just take one moment and let's open with a word of prayer that our minds would be open and that the Lord would be able to re reveal things to you and to me specifically tonight as we meet with our time together. So Jesus, we thank you for this week that we're walking through. We thank you, God, that you remind us this week that so much can change in seven days and even in three days. And in this time that we're in, where we need a little hope and reassurance, we thank you that everything we're going to discuss and talk about points back to you. So Lord, I pray that as we're all in our own living rooms tonight, and even the people that are watching this later, that you would just come and dwell among us, that you would reveal insight that is applicable to each of our own lives, that you would give us wisdom through your word, and that you would um, reveal truth to us as well. You meet us so personally where we're at, and we thank you. We, we just give you the invitation to do that and to speak very clearly in your precious holy name. Amen. Okay, so I am going to, I think Kevin is monitoring chat. Not at me, yes, if you are. Okay, all right, so he's monitoring the chat somewhat here. I'm unmuting you. So, I'm tucking the kids in, and then I'll be back to monitor the chat. This is bedtime, so if he doesn't answer you right away, um, know that he will when he comes back. But if you guys have questions and you want to type in chat, feel free to do that. If you can't access the chat, um, write down any questions that you have, and we will try to open up at the end for a few minutes to answer questions. Okay, so if you participate in either answering questions at the end um, or typing in the chat box, we are going to do a giveaway for a Bible-based rollerball tonight. We're going to do that at each of the three classes. So interaction gets entry into, <laughs> and that's the advantage of, you can watch the replay, but if you show up live, you get to think about winning or have a chance to win. Okay, I'm trying to remute him. I, it's not working. Okay, awesome. Okay, so let's go on and get started. So we're going to start at the very beginning. By the time we get through Saturday, we'll get, we'll start in Genesis and we'll get through Revelation, right? No, they're going to be short. This is the Cliff Notes version, but I want you to see that laced throughout the Word of God, that from the beginning to the end, um, there's a story that's woven beautifully, and God did that to all point to Jesus, but with us in mind, because he brings us into communion with him. So nothing's by accident, and that's what I pray that you see tonight. So we're going to look at Genesis and at John, both the, the Old and the New Testament. I'm not going to read all of these for the sake of time, but I want you to have the references so you can look back at them later. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And then he separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And he called the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. 
then God, it goes on to say that God created a space between the waters in verse six, and, and it seals up the second day. And then we're especially going to focus on verses 11 and 12 um, when we're going into day three. So verse 11 starts with, then God said, let the land sprout with vegetation, every sort of seed bearing plant and trees that grow seed bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. And that is what happened. The land produced vegetation, all sorts of seed bearing plants and trees with seed bearing fruit. Their seeds produced plants and trees of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Evening passed and morning came marking the third day. So what I want you to take away from this is that God used his intelligence to speak life into all things, even the plants that he created for our good, as you're going to see in a moment. So if we skip to John 1, um, 1 through 5, but let's look at 1, 1 through 4 specifically. In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. Type in the chat box if you know who the word was. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought life to everyone. So if you didn't get to type in there yet, the word is Jesus. And so this says nothing was created except through him. So let's go on to see another favorite scripture. These are specifically the oils that we're going to cover in this oil of the Bible series. But this specific um, verse, I feel like lays the foundation for um, what we're covering during this series. So Ezekiel 47, 12 says, fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, ne neither will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. So I don't know if you're like me. I read that book, that verse in Ezekiel tons of times before I discovered essential oils. And I knew that God provided fruit on trees for food. And um, he, he gave us food from plants. But I never really, I somehow I missed that part about the leaves being for healing. And so um, when we talk about essential oils and the plants, they come from God put these things on earth for healing and for nourishment of our bodies. So it's pretty pretty awesome. Pretty mind-blowing. So let's look at a biblical history of essential oils um, quickly. So when we look at, a lot of times we hear the, the oil uh, like trend that's going on right now and think it's a new thing, but it is really not. It's ancient history. It, essential oils were the first medicine of mankind dating back more than 5,000 years. They, they are recorded by Egyptians through hieroglyphics. Um, you would see um, Hippocrates, who was the father of modern medicine, used essential oils in his practice. And they were used by many um, cultures, such as the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, Europeans, Chinese, through all countries they were used historically so um when we see that this is not a new thing but in scripture they're mentioned a lot so 36 books in the old testament and 10 books of the new testament mention either essential oils or the plants that produce them so we're going to do a percentage of what what percentage of the bible they're mentioned in in a minute but that that's major so you'll see a lot in the old testament because we see it laying the foundation and the picture of things to come. That's one of the things we're going to look at in Cyprus tomorrow. We're going to talk about Cyprus as it pertains to the gallows that Haman's, Haman built. We are going to talk about Cyprus as it um, goes along with Noah's Ark and also the cross. So that's just a little teaser alert, but we'll go more into that tomorrow. But just like the story of Cyprus, when things are mentioned, they and, and these plant particles are mentioned, they often are foreshadowing coming events, which is the prophecy that we talked about in the last slide. So the first time that an essential oil is mentioned in the Bible is in Genesis 37, 25. So the first book of the Bible, and it's when Joseph was being sold into slavery. And you can see um, the reference down there at the bottom. So the first essential oil to be mentioned in scripture was myrrh. So we are, I think we're scheduled to talk about myrrh on, I think it's tomorrow, either tomorrow or Saturday, but 
um, we actually used myrrh in our house today because Kevin was sharpening a knife and cut his finger. He missed the sharpener. And so myrrh is a liquid band-aid and we were able to kind of use that to seal up the, um, the cut from the bleeding. So you'll learn a lot more about, about myrrh and how it was used and how you can use it in the days to come. All right, so when you hear oils of the Bible, I don't know if you're like me, but the only oil that I knew in terms of the Bible was olive oil because I grew up in a church that believed in anointing with oil and praying for the sick. And so um, what that meant was somebody got a bottle of olive oil and poured it in their hand and smeared it on your, <laughs> on your head. That was our practice. So hearing oils of the Bible to me meant, okay, we're talking about olive oil. So olive oil actually is laced throughout scripture, um, but it's not the only oil. So altogether, there are 1,031 references to either oils or the plants that produce them in scripture. Does that surprise you? It did me, seriously. So 33 different species of essential oils are referenced in scripture. We're not going to cover all of them in this class, but we're going to hit um, a pretty good, like probably a third of that. So 70% of the books of the Bible mention either essential oils or the aromatic plants from which they were derived. So that it's pretty major. God must have thought it was pretty important to put it that often um, in his word. We have one more person here trying to come in. Sorry. Okay. All right. So let's talk about three cool things. Well, before we get to that, let's dwell on olive oil one more second. Olive oil is mentioned 191 times um, in, the, in the King James Version. The, the oil word is mentioned 191 times, but olive oil is only mentioned seven of those times. So we see not just the plant, but we see the word oil 191 times. Olive oil is just seven of those. And in biblical time, no perfumes were artificially or synthetically produced like they are today. So anytime you're reading scripture and you see words like essence, incense, fragrance, any of those words, it, it's talking about essential oils because that's the only place, the only place that they could derive their fragrances from were from plants. So olive oil was a staple in the Holy Land, just like it is today. Um, it can be used as a carrier oil today. We also use, we have coconut oil and grapeseed oil and jojoba oil and some other carrier oils now today. Probably um, coconut oil is the one we use most frequently because olive oil, you can make things like roller balls with olive oil, but it's a little heavier in nature and so it doesn't roll quite as well. But it's always an option to be able to dilute still today um, with olive oil. So let's talk about three cool things about essential oils. So I want you to know going into this study that essential oils are safe, they're effective, and they are affordable. So what are essential oils if you're brand new? They are natural aromatic compounds, which means they have a lovely scent to them. Um, everybody's nose is wired a little differently. So some of us may think scents are lovely that other ones of us don't, and that's okay. We're all created unique, but they all do have a very distinct aroma to them. And they come from seeds, barks, stems, um, and roots of plants, flowers of plants as well. When you're using essential oils, you want to remember that they are 50 to 70 times more potent than herbs. So one drop goes a long way. And that's one of the reasons that they're so affordable because one bottle has between 250 and 300 doses or drops in them. One drop of peppermint is equivalent in effectiveness to 28 cups of peppermint tea. So if you've ever drank peppermint tea for like an upset stomach to soothe something like that, it would take 28 cups of peppermint tea to equal one, um, one drop of peppermint oil. So that's how powerfully potent it is. And so when you're using them, just respect them in that way that they, less amounts of oil more often are able to be processed better through your body. So um, essential oils are the life force of the plant. So think about how we have blood in our body and um, it, it is life going through our veins and the, the oils are the life force of the plant in that way. They serve as the plant's immune system so they can effectively fight off bugs and bacteria and even pests. They're a protective thing um, for the plants. They serve as a natural um, 
like bug repellent for for plants so that they the the bugs don't attack them there are certain plants when you plant a garden that you plant near other plants to keep bugs away from them and it's the aroma of the plant that keeps them away so because our bodies and and essential oils are wired the same way by our creator our bodies naturally know what to do to process them so um they really effectively work on the cellular level. They don't just treat symptoms, but they get to the root of the problem and help us heal our cells um, or, or may, put our cells in the best optimum position so that our bodies, our cells are healthy and can help our bodies heal effectively because God's plan and intention is for our healing and our full health in every way. So they're also affordable, much more so than traditional medical care, not just in co-pays and um, cost of care. And I'm not in any way downing doctors because I believe that God gifts us all for what he wants us to accomplish on earth, and that includes doctors. But I do think that sometimes we hand away the wisdom that God wants to give us to care for ourselves effectively and then want the doctor to fix everything. And what essential oils do is help us to learn to take some of that, that care back and have confidence in the wisdom that God is speaking to us at home so that when we seek out a doctor, it's because we really need their wisdom and expertise, not because we just turned our mind off and stopped thinking at all for ourselves. This brings a lot of comfort when you're taking care of a sick child in the middle of the night and the doctor's office is closed and you have to, to figure out what to do for them until morning. So sometimes we found in our experience by the time morning gets there, you no longer need the doctor's expertise. <laughs> so let's talk about three ways to use essential oils. These are, you're gonna see how this correlates to scripture. So the three ways that we're gonna talk about using doTERRA oils, um, which is what we're talking about tonight. Not all oils are created equally, and we're not going to cover that like we would in, um, in an intro class, but I do want you to have some basic knowledge that um, doTERRA oils, because they're the highest grade essential oils on the market, they are formulated to be used aromatically, topically, and internally. So aromatically means that you're going to inhale them either from your hands or from a diffuser to impact your mood, to disinfect the air, or to help with your respiratory system, to help your breathing, to help you breathe clearer and sleep better. Topically, you would dilute with an oil like olive oil or fractionated coconut oil that you see pictured there in the picture. And this gives you a more localized effect. Like if you have an upset stomach or you have knee pain or you have back pain or you have discomfort in your head or an earache, you can apply directly to those areas and get a quicker, more targeted um, effect. And internally, again, this is exclusively to doTERRA oils because not all oils are created equal. You can enjoy a few drops in water or veggie caps, which is a little capsule that you can pour the oils in or under your tongue. So um, topically, you would do for sore muscles or a cut or a scrape. Internally, you might do for digestive purposes or to support your liver or to support your urinary tract, those kind of things. Um, and, and some people take oils internally for calming as well. So if a doTERRA oil is formulated for internal use, it's going to have a supplemental fax box on the back. This is the one oil we're going to be discussing tonight. And you can see it does not because this is an oil that's formulated as a mood oil. This is what we're going to use as our stand-in for the oil of joy. So we'll talk more about that tomorrow and Saturday. Okay, so this is the biblical foreshadowing of those three ways, aromatically, topically, and internally, to use essential oils. Examples of where it's used in scripture. So in Exodus 35, we find an example of an aromatic use where we talk about the incense altar and the poles and the anointing oil and the sweet incense, the, the tabernacle and how it was filled with this aroma. Topically, in 2 Kings 9, 6, we see that Jehu is being anointed, and so the oil is poured topically over his head. And then internally, in Mark 15, when we're talking about um, the crucifixion, we're going to talk some more about this tomorrow as well, but they offered Jesus wine mingled with myrrh in the wine. So this would have been an example of internal usage that he, and we'll talk about why that would be um, something that he would drink at that time. So you can see that even historically, these methods of use line up with what we do today. Um, so let's talk about a couple of other ways in scripture that um, we see that we can correlate to today as well. So oils were used in scripture for blessing and anointing. They were used for healing. 
they were used in veterinary use. Um, and if we have time to get to that tonight, I'll expand a little bit. If not, we'll do it in one of the other classes. But in Psalm 23, we see um, the anointing of oil with the sheep there. And we can use essential oils on animals today, just as we could then. Um, food preparation and baking, light and lamps and fuel, consecration of the Levitical priests, commerce and beautification. So through this series, we're really gonna focus, besides the aromatic and internally and topically, we're gonna focus on the first three, which would be for blessing and anointing, for healing and for the veterinary use. So let's talk about the biblical um, meaning of anointing. So when we hear the word anoint, you may have um, several different things that you think about in that way. But one of the words for anoint comes from the Hebrew word massage. Type in the chat box if you th can think what massage sounds like. I'll give you just a minute for that. Does it sound like massage to you at all? <laughs> so when we know about anointing, we lay hands on with care. And so it was a sign of blessing and approval. And we're going to go a little bit deeper um, into that tomorrow. But I just want you to know that this was a biblical practice that actually involved oil and it involved anointing. And I don't know if you realize this, but there is actually a recipe that we're going to talk about um, in this series for the anointing oil. And so God cared enough that he didn't just tell us what was in it, but he actually gave us parts <laughs> for it. So um, we're gonna talk on, I believe that Saturday, we're gonna talk through exactly what that recipe is or exactly what was, there were two different recipes. One was used to burn the incense in the tabernacle and one was used to physically apply to people. But let's talk real quick about the oil of joy, the oil of gladness. I want to go back to the aromatic use of essential oils. And when we talk about using oils aromatically and what they do to mood, if you were to pinch right here, behind this part of your, of your nose is a, seated a little thing called, it's your limbic system and the, the olfactory system leads to the limbic system. But aroma impacts that. So if you were to punch pinch this little part behind that would be the amygdala and the amygdala is just an amazing thing that God wired us with the funny thing about the amygdala it it is it controls our memories our learning our appetite even our food cravings so if you walk through the mall and you smell mrs fields cookies you might think of a of a time in your life where someone baked you chocolate chip cookies after school and it's warm and comforting and and you start to feel all warm and fuzzy that's the amygdala at work when you think about pumpkin pie or you think about any kind of really, uh, there, there's a certain scent that Kevin and I, we went to Atatash Mountain in New Hampshire on our honeymoon, and when we smell this wood-burning scent anywhere that we are, it reminds us of our honeymoon because that's the amygdala at work. It picks up on aroma. The only thing that it responds to other than, um, it doesn't respond to the written word or any of the other senses, but it, it does respond to um, music and it responds to aroma. So we actually have an emotional response before we have a rational response because of the way that our sense of smell is um, wired. So the olfactory nerve travels from our nose to the center of our brain where the amygdala is. So whenever you have a response from the amygdala, you'll actually see that your heart rate slows down. Um, you smile and are at peace. And that's what happens when we use essential oils. So when we talk about the oil of gladness um, and how it's referenced throughout scripture, we don't actually have a recipe for that like we do for the anointing oil. So we're going to use Elevation, which is our joyful blend um, tonight. So Elevation has lavender and tangerine and elamai. A lot of these are ones that we can't buy individually, but they're put together in this beautiful blend. Lemon myrtle, ylang ylang, osmantha, sandalwood, melissa. And so when we see the scriptures that are used that talk about the oil of gladness, I'm going to read a couple of them to you. And I want you to see just some of the, th the ways that an oil can impact your emotion as you read this while I'm reading to you. So Psalm 45, 7 and 8 says, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. 
All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia from palaces adorned with ivory. The music of the strings makes you glad. That's my favorite verse because it combines the power of aroma with the strings from the music. So you can see why um, the two most powerful things I think that can affect your mood as a Christian are worship music and essential oils. Um, they take us to a place where God intends us to be healthy in our emotions. And the, there's a powerful thing um, when you pray, put essential oils in your diffuser and turn some worship music on. And it really um, gives you a physical response through the slowing of your heartbeat and making you feel closer to the Lord. Proverbs 27, nine, perfume and incense bring joy to the heart and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. Isaiah 61, one through three, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise. There it is again, combining the two for a spirit of heaviness or a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. There's one more verse I'm not gonna read in Hebrews 1, 9, but I wanna focus on that last part. We are called to be a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. So really that's what this teaching is all about because it all points back to Jesus. Everything that we're doing, we want to point back to Jesus. And when we're healthy, it points back to Jesus. We can serve others in a way that he intended us to that's different than if we're broken and we're um, down and our bodies aren't functioning properly. So um, this verse means a lot to me, 3 John 2. It's another foundational verse for what we do. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. See, when our soul is broken, it affects our body. When our body is broken, it affects our soul, or our soul affects our mind when we're not doing well there. So um, those things all work together, just like the Trinity does. And one more thing. I love this paraphrase. You are the child of the King. You are mine. My desire is for you to prosper to be healthy and whole, and for your soul to be fully satisfied. I'm crazy about you. Love, Papa. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm going to unmute. We're down. We have about two minutes left. If anybody has questions, so I'm going to go through and unmute. We're going to wrap there tonight. And um, let's see if I can get everybody in here. All right. Does anybody have any questions or anything you want to share tonight? What is the verse in Isaiah and the one in Hebrews you just read? Okay, Hebrews is one nine, and um, let's see, Isaiah sixty one one through three. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I have recorded everybody that's been on the call and who's been in the chat. And I really want you guys to be able to check into the, um, to the group quest. Did everybody find the quest group? Okay. I'm hoping you're in. We're going to do some more. So there's three videos, but there's also going to be these. We'll do the giveaway. And so our time's wrapping up right now, but you'll see who won. And, um, the rollerball, and then we'll meet you at noon tomorrow. You can be on live, and we'll post the recording for those. But if you want to have an opportunity to win, show up at noon tomorrow, and then at six o'clock on Saturday. Okay. Happy Good Friday, everybody. I'm going to shut off the call for now, and I will meet you over in the quest group. Thank you so much for taking your time to join us live tonight. It was good to see you. you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.